All right, YouTube, today is uh, October 31st, 2018. It's Halloween, and I got my <coughs> reproduction hood and trunk in today. Uh, so I wanted to do a video for anyone out there that's considering fixing their old hood or trunk or, or just breaking down and buying a new one. Um, at first glance, I mean, I didn't do an unboxing, but um, they were packaged pretty well. The corners were protected. Came on a freight truck. Uh, has a Made in Taiwan sticker on them. So, you know, that was expected. I, I, that's not a surprise to me. Um, but at first glance, the trunk um, seems really, really good. Uh, it's e coded. There's no, there's no warpage. There's no dings, shipping damage, which that wouldn't be part of the reproduction process. But as far as overall looks, looks good. It's, it's looks, looks good. Um, the hood. You can see the reflection from the roof here or from the ceiling. Um, it's, it's already pretty, pretty flat. Had something funky going on with the e coat here. I thought it was a crack. Almost had a heart attack, but it's just a coating. So um, that being said, I would say that these things need—they still need to be primered and uh, guide coated, blocked down before paint. So you still have to go through the process. I'm okay with that. Um, I was expecting that. My main thing is how do they fit? Well, we're going to find out here this evening. Um, but just as a little test here, um, well obviously the trunk, it has the tail lights and the lock assembly or lock mechanism cut out. It doesn't have the holes for the cove molding, it doesn't have the holes for the center uh, badging, and it doesn't have the holes for the trunk split. So holes are going to have to be uh, drilled out. That's the least of my concerns. But. Uh, just to do a quick recap for those who may not follow all my videos, I had this car, I bought this car and I had this trunk and this hood underside sandblasted, only the underside. Then I epoxied them, I flipped them over, I epoxied them, and then I noticed there was a lot of warpage. Um, so, you know, I smeared some filler and kicked stuff around and finally realized that I didn't like doing that. So I broke down and I and I bought these reproductions. So a $30 sandblast job essentially cost me around 800 bucks um, and ruined. Well, I wouldn't say ruined, that's fixable. Hey, that's fixable if you want to do it and you have the time and you want to learn how to shrink metal. All that is fixable. Any Anything involving steel is fixable. So I just don't want to mess with it. So <clears throat> let's just do a quick measurement here. I take off. Some markings on each. This is a rough, rough deal here before I mount it. Well, it's close to 57 and a quarter. This one down here too. This one looks more like fifty-six and a quarter. Fifty-six and a quarter. So you know, rough rough measurements. They appear to be the same size. <clears throat> the body line's pretty crisp. Uh, now this one has. Two, two heavy coats of epoxy on it, so it's going to diminish the crease of the body line, but it's, it's comparable, definitely. Um, of course, the original seemed heavier, um, but there isn't a whole lot of adjustment on the trunk for me, um, and I'm, I'm hoping I really get lucky because... Uh, if they took, or whoever made these things, took an original trunk such as mine 
and made the repops out of that, then this thing should fall right on my car because the quarters are original. Everything is original to the car. No sheet metal has been replaced. So in theory, this thing should just fall right on the car. I can understand if you have different quarter panels, you have, you know, repop trunk hinges and, and torsion bars and, and you know, all kinds of different Frankenstein things going together, then you might run into a problem. But I'm, I'm hoping I get lucky and this thing bolts on, closes, needs minor adjustments, and holes drilled. That'll be a win. Uh, let's look at the hood. like about 58 and a quarter about 58 and a quarter so same going down the sides Uh, now this one has the holes drilled for the hood split and for the hood lip molding. So this one should be ready to go. Let's look at the holes. What do we got? 47 give or take, 39. 30, 21, 12, and 3. Forty-seven, thirty-nine, thirty. Twenty-one might be a little off. Twelve. Of course, the clips on the trim is adjustable, so that's not huge. But I was just want to see how close it is. Um. So, like I said, this was just a little comparison video. I'm told that these hoods and trunks, they can be re branded by any company under the sky but they all come from Dynacorn <clears throat> so doesn't matter if it's labeled you know Rocheron brand trunk or you know Dynacorn they all come from the same place so that's about what you can expect I'm really impressed with the flatness of the panels I mean you can see the, the reflection light I mean you know hey it's gonna need work but pretty good no funky creasing going on no bending um, so <clears throat> we're gonna put these things on here this evening see what's going on with it so I know this opens up the argument of uh, reproduction versus original and all that uh, it's the first time ever having to buy a reproduction hood and trunk I mean I bought floor pans and stuff uh, but It can be argued and said that, uh, you know, let's say this body was made somewhere in Michigan and these original hood and trunk were made at another plant somewhere, maybe Los Angeles or wherever. And uh, so you have panels coming from one part of the country and meeting up with a shell in another part of the country. And then you have a bumper coming from the other part of the country, different factories and things like that and places where different things were made back in the 60s. So that leads you to believe that Maybe all these original hood and trunks are not exactly the same. Uh, so that opens up the argument of maybe the reproductions could be just as good. Now, you know, 10 years ago, a lot of people were saying these things are garbage. I, I don't pay attention to the Internet much anymore, so I don't know if people are still saying that. But at first glance, they seem fine to me. Um, I mean, I'm impressed. Um, so, you know, that also can be open up the argument of well, what do you want on your car? Do you want a replacement or an original hood that you had to cut and section out and replace with different sheet metal that wasn't made in the 60s from Michigan? 
Um, is that still an original hood? Good question. Um, you know, is it is it an original car when people restore original cars? Is it still an original car even though we replace the quarter panels and the floor pans? Is that still original car? Good question. I don't think so. Um, I'm really disappointed that I'm having to use reproduction hood and trunk for this car that is all original. But things happen. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me. As long as it looks good and mounts, open and closes as it should, I'm good. Um, so I just wanted to do a little display for anybody who's, who's considering. Um, at first glance, I would say do it. I mean, these things can be bought for like four fifty a piece, maybe on eBay or something like that. You know, I got them a little bit cheaper because I have a guy that I go to. Um, but wish I could show underside, but I really can't. But the underside is, is good. Uh, there's no definitely no oil canning going on on these things, like what, what's happening with my old ones. That was the reason why it's got so much filler. <sighs> Excuse me, but uh. Stay tuned. We're going to have these things on this car tonight. Part 2 video. Looking forward.